EEG is a specialised test by which we measure the electrical activity and electrical patterns within the brain. Um, when somebody is referred for an EEG, the first thing that happens when they arrive is that they have measurements made of their head uh, using surface anatomical landmarks. Um, using these landmarks, the head is divided up into different um, sections using what's known as the 10-20 system. Um, the circumference of the head is measured first of all um, and then divided up into different points. Then an AP and a transverse measurement is made. And using these measurements we then apply recording electrodes to the scalp. And these electrodes pick up tiny electrical signals within the brain of the order of a millionth of a volt or a microvolt. Um, there are in total 24 recording electrodes on the scalp and then there are other electrodes placed under the eyes and on the neck. A typical EEG recording takes 30 minutes to perform and during that time the patient is encouraged to relax uh, if possible um, to achieve sleep um, so that we can uh, acquire EEG information in both states. The patient is also encouraged to deep breathe or hyperventilate because this changes cerebral blood flow and this can accentuate abnormalities of brain rhythm. The basic waking background rhythm uh, seen on an EEG is determined by uh, subcortical structures, um, most probably the thalamus. And uh, a variety of different uh, frequencies are seen uh, which determine the, the different rhythms that we, that we, that we interpret and we might show uh, some examples of these. So during the, during the recording, the a routine recording will take 30 minutes and at the beginning um, the uh, aim is to record as much resting activity as possible and the patient is encouraged to relax uh, and at different times will be asked to close or open their eyes. And uh, normal so-called alpha rhythm is something that um, appears best when the patient is relaxed with their eyes closed and then this normal uh, alpha rhythm disappears when they open their eyes and alert, um, uh, alert their brains. Um, as the patient becomes drowsy, their background rhythm will slow down um, and other changes are seen in the background EEG rhythm as the patient enters um, stages, uh, the early stages of sleep. There are two provocative measures that are uh, included in every routine EEG protocol. The first is hyperventilation where uh, over three minutes the patient will be asked to deep breathe um, in order to uh, alter cerebral uh, blood flow and that this can bring about changes in, um, uh, in, in the recorded rhythms. The second provocative uh, measure is photic stimulation where a strobe light is, um, is used at different frequencies um, to try and uh, uh, elicit photosensitivity which is a feature of some epilepsy syndromes. So EEGs are most commonly requ requested in patients who have had a seizure uh, or who have a, a history of epilepsy. Um, the EEG can be very useful in determining um, if somebody has uh, a risk for epileptic seizures and uh, beyond this it can also help determine the area of the brain uh, where this risk is, is uh, originating from. Um, other circumstances where EEG can be helpful um, include certain states of delirium. Uh, there are EEG patterns that are characteristic for certain drug overdose states um, and for other uh, rare diseases such as Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Um, but far and away the most common uh, application of EEG uh, is in the, uh, the workup of patients who have had seizures or who have epilepsy. And Broadly, uh, epilepsy syndromes can be divide, uh, divided into either focal or generalised epilepsy syndromes and the EEG is particularly useful in making this distinction. Electrodes are positioned uh, on the scalp um, according to an internationally agreed protocol uh, known as the 10-20 system. Um, the electrodes then feed into a head box uh, and then back to the main computer where the EEG recording can be analysed after the, the recording is, is, is fully acquired. 
In addition to recording from the scalp, we also have two electrodes on the limbs which record surface uh, ECG activity. That way we can correlate ECG uh, with any events that may happen, whether that's sleep or whether that's a seizure during the recording. The positions of the, uh, of the electrodes and how we, how we will later look at them uh, is referred to as the montage. And the most common montage that we look at uh, here is called the double banana montage, where electrodes are uh, or organized from front to back in a uh, front fronto occipital run and then a parasagittal run running across the scalp like that.